And to be honest with you, this is going to be a difficult break for me on a, for a couple of reasons. First, I'm going to share something with you that is just a gut feeling um, and something that has really been bothering me and is starting to come together in my head. It all could be BS, quite honestly. But I'm so tired of the experts and everybody telling me, oh, no, that, that could never happen, only to find that it does happen. I think everybody is looking at a box. They're looking at everything and saying, oh, yeah, well, I don't know, no, you're, th you're thinking over here. Yeah. Everybody needs to get out of that box. And I know somebody in this audience is thinking out of the box. We are a country that is in real trouble. I've been talking about this perfect storm for a while, and I've been looking for that Archduke Ferdinand moment. That Archduke Ferdinand was the guy who was assassinated in some, I don't know, some country over in Europe that started World War I. And if I would have told you, you know, back then, hey, we're going to go to war over Archduke Ferdinand being assassinated, everybody would have said, you're crazy. Yes. Yes, maybe I am. I think the final straw that could break our camel's back could be the collapse of Mexico. And I want to explain some of the factors on why I say that. And nobody is putting this together. Mexico is the 12th largest economy in the world. They are our third largest oil supplier. They are the second largest trade partner with us. Okay, that's pretty heavy if they start to collapse. Drug-related crime is causing general unrest there in Mexico. There were 438 reported kidnappings last year. Many are Americans, more likely unreported, and then there are beheadings, particularly those beheadings of police officers. They are starting to stir things up. You add to these factors the three-sided three civil war that would happen if they would collapse. Please consider this, as insane as it may be, because only with information will we not panic, only with information will we know what to do and prepare for. If Mexico collapses, does anybody think that there would be a rush of people trying to get out of a new narco state that would rush our border where there is no fence? So you have the border fence people versus the non-border fence people in a heated debate, kind of like what we have been, you know, where you're called a racist for just wanting a fence. But now it's much, much worse. You'd also have the Hispanic versus the whites. There are Americans that are... Are, uh, that are blamed for buying, buying drugs down in Mexico. And you know what, Mexico? You're right. Part of this is our fault. We're buying drugs, and you're living in the godforsaken conditions that those drug, uh, uh, drug lords are creating because we can't stop doing coke. And we're not stopping the flow of guns into, into their country. That's what they're saying. And the Mexican versus the American front, the refugees that would flow into the country that that might have the mindset that this is American land. Have you heard that before? I'm sorry, Mexican land. Have you heard that before, that they're going to reclaim California? They're going to reclaim Texas? That is just the seeds of discontent. If, if things would shake apart, are we the people that really can fight that? Are we the people that can be peaceful? Are we the Americans that can stand arm in arm and welcome people onto our boat, but not panic or allow panic to spread to sink our lifeboat? There are too many things going on in Mexico that nobody is paying attention to, and we're going to, because I just have this gut feeling that this could be the final lightning bolt in the perfect storm. Ghost Team Captain Scott Mitchell, you're stationed in Mexico City to protect the President of the United States during a summit meeting that also includes the Prime Minister of Canada and the President of Mexico. The conference is ambushed by a group of rebels, and it's your job to get the leaders of the free world to safety. Buckle up, gentlemen. The radio chatter says this is going to be a hornet's nest. The story is completely fictional, but the political situation, equipment, and strategies your team of soldiers put into action are very realistic. The technology at your fingertips is currently being developed by the military for real-world use four years from now. So while you may not get into the game's politics, you'll definitely appreciate the opportunity to use equipment that special forces can't even get their hands on yet. Cover! Need some cover! If you've ever played a game based on Tom Clancy's writings, then you know what to expect here. 
In the first advanced warfighter, you were stamping out a coup in Mexico. And in part two, you're cleaning up the mess. The revolutionaries have decided to invade El Paso and through manipulative media coverage are trying to convince the Mexican masses that it's the right thing to do. Meanwhile, Mexican rebels now claim that U.S. forces are on the ground in Juarez. You play as Captain Scott Mitchell. Back on me! The same guy you took into battle in the first advanced warfighter. The story is primarily told on the fly using the heads-up display. News reports and briefings are zapped in regularly in addition to a smattering of real-time cinemas that typically take place in whatever vehicle is dropping you off at your next mission. It's up to you to stomp out the revolution and finally return Mexico to a peaceful state. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Captain. There aren't a lot of plot twists to speak of, and considering Mexico hasn't exchanged hostile fire with the U.S. in over a century, it's more than a little far-fetched. But it provides an adequate backdrop for all the tactical action you can handle, and then some. What country did outgoing CIA director Michael Hayden, and I love him, list right after Iran as the top threat to the United States? Believe it or not, Robert McCoy just emailed us the right answer. The answer is Mexico, a country attached to ours, Mexico. They're saying it's eh, on the verge of meltdown. That's yeah, great. 2009 report, the Justice Department lists Mexico as, quote, the greatest crime threat to the United States. It is a nation that is on the verge of collapse, and we Americans are already in grave danger because of it. This is setting us up for real trouble. And the border, I have a feeling, is going to be one of the flashpoints. Michael Scheuer, he is the author of Marching Towards Hell. Hello, Michael. How are you, sir? I'm fine, Glenn. How are you, sir? Very good. Uh, Michael, you and I go back a long time, and you and I don't agree on everything, but I believe that you're a man of integrity and honesty. Um, and I had to talk to you about the border because, you know, they're saying that Mexico could melt down. Our CIA is saying that Pakistan uh, and Mexico are the most unstable in the world, and that's saying something, and could melt down at any time. So Mexico is our number two threat. Al-Qaeda is our number one threat. You say they might be combined. Oh, sure, Glenn. They've been studying the Mexican border since at least 2002. In the face of war. Move, move, move. Our best. Look out. Got it. Will only get better. 